Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the World Chess Hall of Fame. My name is Bjorn Ranheim, and I'm the music director here. We are so excited to welcome the Kingsbury Ensemble for their first appearance on our series, and uh, they are going to be presenting a wonderful program from Baroque to Bluegrass, uh, featuring all kinds of wonderful music, and they will be telling you a bit about their program. But before we get to the music, of course, I'd like to thank our benefactors for this series, Dr. Jeannie and Rex Sinkfield. We appreciate all that you do to keep the cultural community here so vibrant. Today is a very special day in St. Louis. It is Give STL Day. And this is a day where we support nonprofits doing all kinds of good work throughout our community. And you can learn more by going to givestlday.org slash WCHOF, which stands for World Chess Hall of Fame. Uh, this organization uh, continues to strengthen the St. Louis region's understanding of chess through fashion, art, culture, history, and music. Since opening in 2011, the World Chess Hall of Fame has welcomed more than 126,000 visitors, enthusiasts, and players with its free exhibitions featuring both local creatives and world-renowned artists. So we hope that you will take time to give to this organization. And you may also give by actually uh, getting a membership to the World Chess Hall of Fame. They start at just $30. Uh, it includes a 20% discount at the award-winning Q Boutique gift shop here. And you can sign up at worldchesshof.org. Did you know that many of chess's world's records are achieved by youth? Learn more by visiting Masterminds, Chess Prodigies. This is a free exhibition here on view through November 7th of this year. Also make plans to visit Keith Haring Radiant Gambit. This is the largest solo show of Keith Haring's work ever held in St. Louis. It is free of charge, but it is closing very soon on May 16th. So you can check out the Radiant Gambit playlist on Spotify after the concert tonight and definitely come and check out that exhibition. This concert series, our composer series, continues in the month of June with a string quartet made up of members of the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra performing Dvorak's American String Quartet and his wonderful terzetto. It's a phenomenal concert and we hope that you can tune in. Our other series, the music series, will continue in May with Joe Park and the Hot Club of St. Louis, a fantastic group of traditional jazz musicians uh, that will be sure to uh, raise the roof of this building. Please take a moment to subscribe below uh, so that you can hear uh, about future concerts on our series. Uh, for a complete program listing for tonight's concert, please visit wchof.org slash programs. Uh, you can follow along with the wonderful program. The Kingsbury Ensemble has been delighting audiences for over 20 years around the St. Louis region, uh, as well as the US and abroad presenting concerts ranging from chamber music and small orchestral ensembles to vocal offerings, dance, and theater. Since last summer, the Kingsbury Ensemble has also inaugurated a popular summer series of free weekly concerts, Little Lawn Music, drawing on St. Louis musical talent in a variety of styles, such as classical, jazz, Motown, and others. So we hope that you will check out more uh, via Facebook and the internet for their uh, listings of programs coming up. But now, without any further ado, I would like to introduce my friends, the wonderful Kingsbury Ensemble.
Ensemble. Uh, thanks for listening to us so for this program. You might be wondering what is the connection between Baroque music and bluegrass music. And so this program, it really explores a lot of that intersection between the two styles of music. And truth be told, you know, Baroque music was born out of Europe in the 17th and 18th centuries. And also in the 17th and 18th centuries was a fiddle and folk and ballad tradition that was just as healthy and strong. And a lot of those tunes came over to the US um, a little bit later, you know, more like later 18th century into the 19th century. But right now we're in Europe. You just heard a tune called O Carolyn's Concerto, written by Turlo O Carolyn. He was a blind harpist in Ireland. Um, his dates were later 17th century into the 18th century. And actually he wasn't blind at birth. He became blind at the age of 18 from a, bout of smallpox, unfortunately. But that didn't keep him from living a normal life of touring all over Ireland, playing all his tunes. This was one of his tunes, and he later had married and had children and all of that. Um, but uh, he's one of the beloved, famous composers of Ireland. So you just heard O'Carolyn's Concerto by him. These next two tunes are actually from a collection called the Hibernian Muse, which is an Irish tune collection, but it was published in London. Um, uh, you know, London is the jokingly with some of my friends, the center of the universe, and so it was kind of that way back then too. Um, so these are two tunes, St. Patrick's Day, which also made it into, uh, it's a, obviously about the patron St. Patrick, you know, of Ireland, but made it into an English ballad opera by Thomas Arne. And then the next tune, The Wild Irishman, which is another Irish dance tune that you'll hear in more of a jig fashion tonight, but also evolved later into a reel. So. if you will. Um, so as you might expect, they're a little body, a little silly, and a lot of fun. Uh, so those of you at home, if you have a glass in your hand, whether it's wine or water or apple juice, go ahead and lift it up as we extol the powers of drinking. Come fill up the bowl of the box on our If we find that one, don't 
brings me now, it was actually one of the top 40 hits, if you will, of the 17th century. Uh, made it through a lot of different countries. Um, probably uh, the, the version of it that a lot of people know is from an English collection of 1685. This is actually a later version, slightly later, 18th century version um, from Scotland. And so you can hear um, some of those kind of rhythms and some of the ornamentations um, by a composer named Gillespie. And uh, here we are. There's John can kiss, John kiss me now.
Roger of Coverly does come from that division violin uh, collection that I mentioned that's from England. This is actually one of the first tunes that came over to America and is part of one of the earliest uh, colonial dances, actually. Um, so Sir Roger of Coverly um, is believed to have been really closely related to the Virginia Real dance. And, uh, and so more on that later, but there is a lot of, there's a very um, strong tie, if you will, between fiddle tunes and dances. So this was originally in the collection, just written as a violin part with bass chords. I've actually fleshed this arrangement out to include a second part right here, and then of course um, the bass part is played by two people instead of one. So, hope you enjoy Sir Roger of Curley. <laughs> actually comes from a German in immigrant. Uh, he lived less than 100 kilometers from Bach's birthday, birthplace, I should say. Um, so that's kind of a cool connection there. But Billy in the Low Ground was probably, I have a bluegrass background, I grew up in Texas, and so that was probably one of the first fiddle tunes. There's another tune on this program that was one of the first that I learned. Um, but Billy in the Low Ground, uh, going straight into um, the rain spring.
All right, this next set is uh, actually St. Anne's Real was uh, probably the first bluegrass tune I ever learned. It actually, um, we don't really know where it came from. It's a very strong possibility that it came from Ireland. Um, and St. Anne could be referring to um, the St. Anne's Bay in Nova Scotia, or it could be for referring to St. Anne, the mother of Mary, who would have been the grandmother of Jesus. So, you know, either way, <laughs> you can't lose, right? Um, and then this one is being paired with Staten Island Hornpipe, which also comes from um, Europe originally. I don't know that it actually references what we would want it, want it to reference in New York, but um, the next set after that, we're going to go straight into Flowers of Edinburgh, Handel's Hornpipe, and Q Green. Those three tunes actually come from an English collection by John Walsh called The Complete Dancing Master. And one thing that's very different about um, how the English perceive or the relationship between fiddle tunes and dances is that with the English collections, you would, you would notice that there would be a tune and then a set of dance instruction, instructions beneath it that are specific to that one tune. In the Americas, uh, I just told you that there was a set of tunes, actually there's a group of tunes that would work with the dance Virginia Reel. And in the Americas, uh, at least in uh, the US, whenever a dance would happen, you could have a, any set of tunes that could accompany one dance as opposed to you know, where it originally came from, where there was actually a very specific dance tied to a specific tune. So, with that, here is what we affectionately call the bluegrass set. <laughs>
Appalachia uh, with this next tune, um, actually, which came from England, 17th century England is some of the first, earliest documentation we have of it, Lord Thomas and Fair Ellender. Um, when it came across the Atlantic, it became a staple of a popular genre in the Appalachian region known as the murder ballad. And so this actually was a tune sung and a lot by the Ritchie family, which was a big Appalachian ballad singing family. Um, and uh, Jean Ritchie actually has some memoirs in her book talking about this tune and how she learned it. And, um, and anyway, traditionally the tune would have been sung a cappella or with a, um, a dulcimer in your lap. Um, but we've fleshed this out into an arrangement to include multiple parts. And uh, Leanne is going to tell you a little bit more about the story behind this very tragic story. <laughs> <laughs> so it's called the ballad of Lord Thomas and Fair Ellender. But there's a third main character who goes unnamed. Uh, she's just referred to as the brown girl. This would have been a girl with brown hair. Um, so this is a love triangle between Lord Thomas, Fair Ellender, and the brown haired girl.
set of Scottish folk songs that were arranged by Haydn. And uh, before we go, I know that Brandy and I got to introduce ourselves, but I just want to make sure that everyone out there knows that this is Ken Colosa on cello, Anne Timberlake on recorder, and of course, Maurice Carla, founder and director of the Kingsbury Ensemble back here on harpsichord. And I know that I speak for all of us when I say thanks for listening, everybody, and thanks to the World Chess Hall of Fame for having us. So as many folk songs are, these are a set of sweet and sentimental songs of love and longing. Roslyn Castle describes a poor shepherd who's pining after a castle girl, and he sings her a gentle serenade. Uh, Craigie Burn Wood is an admission of secret tortured love, and we'll finish with The Soldier Laddie, which is um, the tune of an upbeat lassie who cannot wait for her soldier laddie to come home.
Thank you.